Thank you. Well, when you say unusually chaotic, you mean different from the Thirty Years' War? Um, well, because it's not just a war, it's events that ah. are, it's not simply okay, okay. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Okay. Yes, there's one of the problems, I'll do it by sharing a little story first, so we understand the nature of this. We lived in Africa for seven years, and there wasn't much where we were, okay? Uh, we were in uh, West Africa and the French-speaking countries. And uh, we finally, after seven years, decided to come home. I wanted our children in school. So we came home and we, de we had heard, of course, that the entire United States was a cesspool of pollution. That's the word. This was in 1971. Okay? Uh, the skies were gray, the rivers were all clogged up, and, and nothing was left. Uh, that's what we got from Time and Newsweek. Okay, so we came over and we decided to just take maybe one last trip across the northern part of the United States, see if anything was left. Okay, well, everything was left. It was gorgeous, whole trip. But one single incident. We stopped on the way. We had a Volkswagen van with our kids, three kids, three boys. And so we stopped because we ran out of aluminum foil. And we stopped at this little tiny grocery store uh, on the road in Iowa, I think, or Idaho, one of the two. And Gloria got out and went in just to get a box of aluminum foil. She was in there for a half hour. And I finally, I, said, I didn't know whether something had happened or what, so I got out and I went in there and she's standing in front of the aluminum foil rack. There are dozens of kinds of aluminum foil. And she had never seen dozens of kinds of aluminum foil before, and she had no idea which one to choose. And so for her, that was total chaos. The chaos is coming from the feeling that there's too much to choose from. And that's what we're experiencing today. There are so many choices, so many places in which to put our attention, which one is priority, which I, you know, I tell people and they say, ask, do you have a priority list? I say, yes, it's horizontal, okay? Uh, because there's so much. And it's because of this incredible variety of choice that it feels chaotic. In older times, we didn't have that many choices. And uh, so now, and now we do. So what's happening? It's only, the only thing that, like I say, that makes it seem chaotic are the choices. Otherwise, it's the same old earth and the same old human beings doing the same old thing. They're just doing a lot more things. Right? There are no more natural disasters than there ever have been when we look at the earth itself. We run out of time when we look at the historical records, but if we look at the Earth, we can see there was an awful lot worse stuff uh, at different times. So it's not, that's not becoming more chaotic. It's the human experience that is seeming that way because of choice. And here's, here's where it really gets to us. If this need f comes in as a kind of a need to make the right choice, that can lead to a tremendous sense of insecurity. If we become involved in that, and of course a lot of our society puts that idea out. You gotta be careful what choices you're going to make. Well, you know, I have to tell you, that's total nonsense. Because that assumes that you're more clairvoyant than most human beings are. <laughs> Because choices and decisions don't create events. The choice you make is not going to make something happen. And you can't tell ahead of time what the effect is going to be. Sorry, there just isn't any way. Why? And here's where Hawaiian comes in. There's no future right now. Here's where Hawaiians who are really into their culture have less of a problem because 
there's no word for, there's no future tense in the Hawaiian language. There is no past tense in the Hawaiian language. So traditional Hawaiians never have to look back and look at the things that they did wrong and the wrong choices they made. <coughs> that doesn't compute. That's over, done with. Everything is looked at in Hawaiian language from the point of view of the present moment. I'm not saying all Hawaiians do this, but it's built into the culture. This idea is this is what's real, this is where things are. We make our choices, and if we don't like the results, we make different choices. Some people are afraid to make a choice because it might turn out bad and they'll be disappointed. They're afraid of the feeling of disappointment. Disappointment is no more and no less than the decision that you don't like the way something turned out. Think about that. So you're not going to do something because you might decide you don't like what happened? That doesn't make any sense at all. If you let that one go, you make a choice, something happens, you don't like it, you change it, or you do something else. It's no big deal. So if you can, and what really helps, because we, we put attention on this a lot more in, in other kinds of classes, but if you can remember that this is real, tomorrow's not, and yesterday isn't anymore either. Okay? Well, you don't, the past does not affect you today. Your memories of it do, and your memories exist now. Okay? We're never dealing with the past. We're dealing with our memories of the past and whatever effects we can see and feel and touch and hear and taste now. And so that's where you make your corrections, make your choices. Right? We don't have to choose everything that's out there once we see it's out there. You can only choose and make decisions about what you can choose and what you can make decisions about. It's like, I know this is a very, very old thing, but it fits kind of here somehow. We have made a division of tasks in our house. I decide how Congress should vote, uh, what needs to be done for peace in the Middle East, uh, what we're going to do with NASA now. Gloria decides what we eat, where we're going to live. Uh, uh, when to fill the gas tank. Uh. <laughs> so we have this nice division of labor that works out very well. Okay? It's just to show you that, you know, we can only, we're only existing in the present moment. That's what we have to bring our attention to every once in a while and relax. So am I getting sort of that maybe the reason it seems like all these things are happening is not that more of them are happening or that they're more compressed, but that our awareness is simply broader now so that... Not only broader, our awareness is being bombarded with all this stuff. So of course, yes. It's like I said right now, the way... It'd be fun to do sometime, go back and look at an old television commercial. Okay? I mean, just, just for the fun of it, See what it was done like in those days, okay? Totally different. When you go back and, and, and see some of the great movies uh, from the 40s, okay? Really, the good ones, I mean, you know? And they seem so slow. <laughs> Nothing's happening. <laughs> That's right. So yeah, we're bombarded with stimuli. And what we have to do is sit back, relax, focus on a small part, and get centered again.